Greetings, fabricators. Don't you hate it when a UX developer changes where your screens are and all of a sudden you go, I could do this yesterday, but I don't know how to do this today. Well, that exact thing happened with real-time analytics. I was at a SQL Saturday presenting on it and I was trying to show how you could track the International Space Station. We've got two videos on that and the UX had changed. Fortunately, all the functionality was still there. It was just in a different place. So what we're gonna cover today is an updated tutorial on how you can track the International Space Station on Tales from the Field. Set your affirmations, aspirations. I got shit to do the aftermath of preparation. Good food, good mood, blood in circulation. One step back. Okay, so the screens have changed, but all the functionality is still there. And sometimes that can be a bit of a headache to figure out what's there and what's not. There's actually some new functionality included as well. So here's what we're going to cover. We're going to do the setup like last time. I've got two logic apps. I'm not going to build them, but I'm going to connect two event streams so I can pull in my astronaut information. I'm going to pull in my geolocation of where the International Space Station is located. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to show how we can get the transformations in the data, where those new screens are. And then we're going to do something a little different this time. We're going to build the Power BI report so that way you don't have to download it from a template and you can understand how to be able to get the same functionality on your own. And a quick reminder, this is your first time finding your way over to Tales from the Field. Give us a like and give us a subscribe. We drop content on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. On Mondays and Wednesdays, we drop our MS Tech Bits, which is a video like this where we're inspired by working with you, the community, or the product group. And then on Tuesdays, we have our Azure Data Community Roundtable, where we feature content from the Azure Data Community for the Azure Data Community, uh, lifting up those that are doing the hard work and building the content in the community. All right. Well, speaking of content, let's just get straight over to it. We're starting out in the Azure portal and I'm in my logic app for my geolocation logic app. So you can see we've got a reoccurrence that's going to reoccur every five seconds. And then I'm using an HTTP task to be able to go out to the OpenAI Notify org. And you can see the data is constantly being refreshed. This is our timestamp and the latitude longitude of the position of the International Space Station. And then we've got our send event. Our send event is what we're going to need to configure. Similarly, I have one for the astronauts who are on the IIS, and we've got the same setup. Reoccurrence every five seconds, we've got an open API that we're going to be able to get the roster. So that way, whenever there's a crew change, we're going to be able to get what that crew change is. But it will mainly be static. Uh, we'll still get it every five seconds, and we're going to need to configure the send event. So over in Microsoft Fabric, um, I've got my KQL database, and you can see I've already got it set up to where it's active, and I'm able to write to my one lake. That's important. And we're gonna start out by grabbing the query URI because we're gonna need that later. That's our cluster, and we're gonna use that when we build our Power BI report at the end. Now we're gonna start out with our event stream. Very much like last time that we did these videos, we're gonna go in, we're gonna create a custom app. I'm gonna walk us through some of the same things we did before, just in case you're new to this. I'm going to name it uh, ISS Geoloc again, because we're doing this the second time around. And I'm gonna to go to the keys. In the keys, same as last time, we're gonna to go to the connection string for the primary key. We're gonna make it visible. We're gonna grab this. Uh, you can see I've got my cluster right here, and I'm also going to show you real quick, we've got two elements of this, our connection string and our service bus name. And these are essential to making sure that our logic app works and we're able to feed data into our event stream. We're going to utilize these to be able to set up the connection for our logic app for Geoloc. So over here, we're going to go in and change connection. I've deleted what I previously had, so this has just been failing. I need to start out by naming this. This can be a friendly name, anything we want. I'm going to name it exactly what it is. TFTF demo video for my Geoloc. And then I'm going to get the connection string and we're going to paste that in and click Create New. Now, the next thing I need to get is the service bus name, and I need to set that as the event hub name in the send event message. Once this happens, I can save this, and then we can go back once it saves and look at our overview. You'll see a lot of the messages I have have been uh, queuing and failing. I'm going to re-enable this, and then we're gonna do a refresh to validate that we've got transactions. Everything looks good. We come back over to the event stream. We click on the IIS geolocation, 
And there's a little bit of fabric matcher right there. I can see I have data streaming in. Now this isn't in the format I need. Last time what I did was I said, hey, let's set up a source and we're gonna set up a KQL database. But this is where things have changed. Everything looks similar up till then. I'm not actually naming the destination name. Um, I, it, it could be anything I want, friendly name, and then I'm going to select the KQL database. I'm gonna create a name for a new table as if this is gonna work, but it's not gonna work. Because I go to open event process, and this is where everything has changed. Now, I spent a lot of time clicking around in here trying to figure out where were my KQL operations that I could utilize. They aren't here. This is meant for event streams. And it's really great we have this functionality, but what I need to do now is go to my KQL database, go to get data, and go to existing event stream. I don't set this up in the event stream anymore. We set this up in the KQL database. I select a new table. I say IIS GeoLoc. I grab my workspace. Um, I select the event stream for the IISS geolocation. It will auto prompt in the data connection. I don't need any of these advanced filters yet, but we're going to come back and look at this for astronaut because there's something there that I need. Now, when the data comes in, this is what we had last time, and I need to be able to edit this. I need to set the nested JSON levels to two, and there's a little bit of that fabric magic. We immediately have the data parsed, but now I need to format things. For my IIS position longitude, I need to be able to change this to a real value because that's how we're going to be storing it, and we're going to report off of it. Same thing for latitude. And then for the time step, this one's a little more complicated. We go to string, and then we go to a mapping transformation. Remember, this is a Unix format, and we need to change this from Unix seconds. When I click apply, we get a little bit more fabric magic because you can see I now have this timestamp that we can utilize to be able to get our latest events and our most recent geolocation position. This will process for a moment or two. I've sped this up a little bit, and then I click close. When I click refresh, my data is there in my ISS geolocation table. Now we need to run through the same thing for the astronauts logic app, so uh, or the logic app. So I'm going to come in here, say create a custom app, ISS astronauts again, because again this is our second time around doing this, and then I'm going to set the keys, and we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm getting the connection string primary. Remember these are both different per event stream. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to separate these values out. And again, we have our connection string and we also have our service bus name. We need to make sure that we have these two values. I'm going to come over to the send event for astronauts and I'm going to do the exact same thing. We're going to add a new location. I'm going to name this what it is, TFTF, uh, SS, I, uh, sorry, ISS astronauts. Too many SSISs and ISSs. Uh, to deal with for Microsoft, right? We need to make sure that we change out our event hub name so it matches what we got from our custom application. And then we can save this. And once this saves, we'll be able to go to our destination. Now, I did forget to disable this one, so it's been running the whole time with nothing there. You can see there's a lot of failed operations. But it immediately picked this up, and I can see it succeeded. So we've got data. Now I can come back over and look at the ISS astronauts and I see we've got data coming in. This is fantastic. We're going to go through the same thing again to get this data in. We go to event stream. We go to existing event stream. We're going to select a new table, ISS astronauts. Easy for me to say this time, right? Uh, we select the proper workspace. We select the event stream name that we've just created. And then this is going to populate the data data connection. Now, this time we do need to go to event system properties and we're getting the accepted opt and queued time. We need this timestamp to be able to find out what's the latest batch of astronauts we have. Everything looks good from here. I don't need any transformation, so I'm going to accept this and send it through. We're actually going to do a bit of our transformation in the KQL. So real quick, we refresh, we've got our data. I click on, I see data's coming through. And again, in KQL, you could utilize SQL queries. I'm gonna use KQL, but it's important to recognize that we can do that. I'm gonna use this KQL query set, and we're gonna name this Brad ISS Redo, and we're going to put in our queries. I'm gonna document these queries, and we're gonna start off by finding, uh, by timestamp, what is the 90 minutes that we have for our path. And you can see I'm using an ISS position, longitude, latitude, and timestamp. Um, and I'm 
rendered this with a scatter chart. So you can see for the last 90 minutes, here's the data that's flowed through into my system. Let's add some comments to this. So we know exactly what it is. ISS latest trajectory. And now we're going to create our ISS get latest astronauts table. Remember, we're using direct query for our report. So these queries are important. We're going to say top one by X opted and queued time. And that's why we really needed this value. So we had a timestamp to say, get us this top value every single time. Now, this is where we're going to, where we're going to expand our JSON. We're going to do an MV expand function for people, which is our dynamic column that has our JSON array. And then we're going to set this to the attributes. People.name will equal name. People.craft will equal craft. And when we run this, we see we get these values back for name and for craft. So we'll be able to get the latest batch of astronauts every time our report refreshes when a new batch of astronauts go up. Now, the next thing we want is a trajectory over 90 minutes so we can see a longer arc of what the, um, the orbit is. The way that we do this is we extend our timestamp. Remember, the timestamp was set to be a string, so we need to convert this to a date time, and then we can utilize timestamp. And you can see capital T timestamp, this is case sensitive, is the value that I'm setting as the converted timestamp. And I'm going to then project IIS longitude, latitude, and the timestamp, so that way we can see these values. I get this data. The neat thing is we're not going to use this next query, but I could take this and I could also render this with the scatter chart to be able to see the extended orbit that we have with some of the data we're collecting. Uh, just kind of fun stuff to be able to do at this point in time. But I'm keeping this labeled so that way we can see all of our queries. It's important to have these because when we build our Power BI report, we're going to be using this. The first thing I'm going to do is get data, go to Azure, and go to Azure Data Explorer Cousteau. This is where we're going to put in our Cousteau cluster name, our database, and then we're going to take our first query, the latest trajectory, and click on direct query. That's critically important. Otherwise, we're doing an import model. I want this to be a direct query so we can get the live updates every now and then. Uh, well, actually, every five seconds is what I really want. I want to keep this live. We're going to rename the queries as we bring them in, and then we're going to bring in our second query. The first one was ISS location. This second one, uh, we're going to do database name, but now we're putting in the query for the astronauts. We do direct query again. We click OK, and we're going to see this data now in in our preview. We're going to name it ISS astronauts, and then we're going to do the same thing for our 90-minute query. Azure, Azure Data Explorer Cousteau, connect. We're going to do the cluster name, and then we're going to do the database name, and then we're going to take that query that we used in the query set and bring it in. Everything defaults to direct query after this, so it's really nice. We only have to do it once, but we need to make sure this is direct query. Otherwise, if you import, you're going to have to manually refresh the data to be able to get this to be real time. Uh, we changed the name to this uh, to the location over 90 minutes, and now we've got our data in place. I'm going to start with an Azure map. Um, and what I want is I want this because of the ArcGIS capabilities. So I come in here and I add my data. Uh, pretty simple. We're going to go to the geolocation table, uh, the ISS location table, and we're pulling in the longitude. We're pulling in the latitude for their corresponding columns. But what I want to do is I want to be able to make the latest position a little bit bigger. It's a really neat thing that was done previously. So I need to create a measure for this. And what I'm going to do is this measure, um, I'm going to first off set two variables, max date to get the maximum date. So I know what that max date is. And then an if statement that if the max date is equal to our current one, increase the size. If not, set it at one. So we're going to increase this by 1.5. And we'll drag that over to size. And then we can also drag that to tooltips as well. And you can see on my map, that the latest position for the International Space Station just got bigger, which is good. I want to be able to track where this is. Now, I, I don't like the grayscale maps. I'm going to change this. Uh, first, we'll, we'll edit the title. Um, I'm going to say the current location of the IIS. And then um, what we need to do is go into the map settings. I'm going to change this to the road maps because I like to be able to see the different states, the way things are labeled, uh, the different provinces and territories as we go to different countries. But we're not quite refreshing just yet, but I'm going to do a couple more things before I set our page refresh. 
the first thing I want to do is I want to create our astronauts table. Um, I want to be able to get a list of the astronauts that are there by craft. And so I go in and I select the craft and the astronaut name. Uh, unfortunately, the matrix makes this a little bit small. And, and so I set my columns to craft. I expand this so I can see what the astronauts look like uh, or, or what their names are. But I need to edit the format of this. So first off, we're going to change the title and we're going to set this to be our astronauts list. Next up, I want to get rid of these column totals, subtotals, row slip totals. We don't need any of that. We're not adding up individual people. Um, and then I want to go to the values and I want to increase the size so it's easier for me to be able to see this matrix map. Once that occurs, I'm going to add a little bit of art. I, I want a nice little image of the IIS. I, I grabbed one off the internet. Shh, don't tell anybody. Uh, that's okay. I made sure it was under uh, Creative Commons license. But I got this. I set the title to International Space Station. Now my report's looking cool. I want to set my page refresh at this point in time to be every five seconds. So that way that direct query, we're using that power of the KQL database to constantly be able to refresh these stats. Um, once I set this in place, we should be able to see that we get a little bit of motion as we're loading data. So our data refreshes uh, and then it continues to refresh. Uh, this is really, really cool. I, I can zoom in, I can zoom out on this. And what I want to do is I want to be able to look at the map. But because it's refreshing, keep zooming back in. That's a setting. And what we need to do is we actually need to correct that. So what we have to do is go back into the map, into the formatting. There's a setting for auto zoom. And I, I don't want that setting to be in place anymore. So we're going to go back to format. I'm going to go back to the map settings and on view, there's that auto zoom. I'm going to turn that off and then I get the whole global map the way I want it. So that way I can zoom in on the location and I can see where this is sitting. That's a little bit of fabric magic right there. All right. So this was a little bit longer than a normal video that we do, but I wanted this to be an end -to end tutorial on how we could use um, real-time analytics to be able to track an object and have the power of direct query and KQL databases really shine. You know where we like to keep this going. Down in the comments, sound off. Was this helpful? Uh, did you get a little confused when the user interface changed as well? Uh, we would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Field. As always, be good to one another. Take care. Bye, everybody. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Yeah.